the sixth of my Christmas Village 2022 food tutorial series. Sometimes you spend hours, maybe days, even weeks trying to find a new type of stairs, trying to find a new water feature, a new wall, a new entire project. Some other times you just get it in a snap like that. Yesterday evening I came back from work and just before dinner I passed through here to say hello to my little friend Jay there and I said to him I really need a new type of wall uh, all around the, the water feature because I sincerely don't want to use the same wall I used last season maybe a new type of fence uh, one thing is for sure I want something Steam punk. And I had a flash, guys, just like that. I, it came to me in no time at all. After dinner, I sketched it very quickly and I was immediately convinced of the solution. I know I have tons of tasks still open to complete, to finish, to go ahead, but here in this part the six i will surely start doing a new type of steampunk fences maybe more than a simple fences for the water feature uh painting yes going there the and the steampunk uh, street lamps there to complete i will complete them for sure and some other thing i will close it this part six maybe with the beginning also of a new type of building guys an entire big building a mansion building guys one thing i ate from limax from department 56 that they have staged all their buildings around an, an era around victorian era around the christmas dickens village Around that, forgetting that the time can go ahead, can uh, go to the future, and the time at the past. Uh, but they don't produce any producer at all. They don't produce buildings uh, from past eras. Okay, I need because this is a Victorian era uh, set. Uh, European set in Europe, maybe yes, but a village like that also need ancient buildings. I had a sample last season here in this corner with my um, little tower here, my medieval ages uh, building here. I will go even back this this season, even back towards the past. But it will be huge building and impossible to complete in just one part, maybe four or five parts. I want something ancient too. But let's start with the waters here. I need white water, so I need to paint all the silicone there. Let's start with it. See you in just some seconds. Water, guys, more precisely. Uh, white water. This is supposed to be a sea, an ocean, but in plain winter, in a northern hemisphere at least, seas and oceans are very agitated in plain winter. And agitated water means white water. So I will need to paint my silicone. <laughs> Not entirely, guys, otherwise I would use it some... Uh, white silicon and not uh, crystal clear transparent silicon. But if you ever tried to paint uh, silicon, you face the problem that it's not paintable at all. It has uh, some sort of oily surface, of sleeper surface, and when you um, 
use your uh, brush with some liquid on it, with some acrylic colors, with some varnish on it, and you paint it, it tends to wash away and you get a very awful result. It's stated everywhere that <laughs> silicon has to be used as it is and not be painted, or you may find a pre colored um, silicon, gray and white um, uh, are the uh, most frequent uh, found one. So I needed to find a solution. My acrylic colors doesn't work, they don't work. Uh, I don't like a varnish, I don't like uh, other type of uh, uh, spray color because they are solvent based and they will melt my uh, styrofoam here and the base of the styrofoam. I had to find a solution. In every big general store or garden store or hardware store or whatever they sell um, paints, paintings, no paints, sorry. They also can provide you with pigments. Like this one, guys. This is white. This is titanium white. More precisely, this is titanium oxide. It is a powder, so it's not paintable. I can show you. Just let me uh, open this little box. Sorry for the noise, guys. I hope you can see that this is a powder, okay? It's not uh, a liquid nor uh, something adding a viscosity like an acrylic color. And you can see that my uh, top of the brush has powder on top of it. This is powder. I don't need to use a solvent or uh, other things to use it. Look, this is pure power, guys. Uh, I and it is not toxic at all. So don't don't fear uh, the uh, the fact that you can have your hands uh, scratched, smashed by this powder. Th those are uh, organic colors, uh, earth colors. If you mix this powder here simply with water they suggest a mix in the in the in the notice there yeah, they suggest but i go at the feeling water plus this powder and the silicon became immediately paintable you just need to wait for the mix to dry out and the oxide power powder sorry the, this oxide white powder will stick forever on top of your silicone yes you don't have to wash it afterwards but wherever you paint it it will stay because it this powder if you don't use too much water it prevent slippery of the solution okay let's start I will pour some uh, some of this powder in here, a spoon or two. I will add some water. I will mix. If it is not enough, I will add some other water. Okay. Like that. And then I will start the painting here and there. Like that. Don't worry if you have the impression that it is too, too much. When it dries out, the white tend to disappear a little bit, to fade out, okay? So it's simply a matter of painting whatever you want. Here, closer to the cliff, here, closer to the rock, some 
<coughs> more white here. And then some sparse here and there in other cases. In another way, it doesn't have to be even there. You can see that it immediately changed the aspect of the water there. And so on guys, I will most probably show you the final result in my uh, final recap. Uh, as always, this will take me no more than half an hour to complete. So let's go ahead with uh, something else. Welcome back guys, and this is where I left with you in my part 5, with the first of the two uh, new steampunk uh, street lamps at this stage here. Not completely done, but in the meanwhile I also made the other one, the twin one, uh, almost the same shape, guys. Okay, okay, good, like that. You can see that they are almost completely identical. And so this one with the gold and, uh, and silver is the first one, this one with the bronze, both of them bronze is the new one. Same technique, same thing goes there. I'm not satisfied with this section here. I need a way to uh, get, the, get it a, look, a more natural look.
good guys the first one is done uh, so you know, see I've used the some gasket here some more PVC tube in here I've used the four nails here to simulate the, the flange there and I haven't cut the nails because they will help me uh, stick attach the this uh, uh, light lamp here to the uh, wall to the styrofoam wall okay it will help me attach it there with the nails into the styrofoam wall maybe with some uh, glue <coughs> also with some uh, glue uh, still need to be painted but before getting uh, with the painting I need to do the exact same thing for the, the second one there, for this one here. So before getting uh, all the uh, colors, all the acrylic colors on the table, I need to do the exact same thing for the second one. Now, some hours later, ready to paint the street lamps. Here, the couple of street lamps are finished. The super glue had uh, cured well. The gasket and the nails will help me fix these to the styrofoam. Sorry for my dirty fingers, but super glue with the black from the gasket is a mess. I even used some sandpaper to eliminate it, but it won't get away. I will start painting them, um, but in the meantime, while these was uh, curing, was drying out, I prepared uh, two bigger. Uh, pipes there that I will place right there like that uh, here I have some uh, pressure indicator here same technique the pipe here this is way more um, large this is one uh, one centimeter I think yes one 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 point two centimeters in diameter same technique, I cut a uh, narrow from the set that comes uh, with the steampunk, steampunk gears, sorry, uh, not a bigger gasket here with the same nails there. Uh, this will be placed, as I said, like that. This on the wall, this coming from the, um, the road and going into the wall next to the um, street lamp there, maybe at this eight here. This is going somehow deep into the styrofoam. Anyway, same technique. I, I don't film it because it is the same technique I use it to do the street lamps. A gasket here, a nail here, the arrow, simple paper for the, the numbers there and then some transparent PVC. Uh, I still have a, what we need from it, I think, yes. It is a very thin um, sheet of uh, uh, PVC, transparent PVC, okay, that I use it to get around here and then on top here. Uh, not perfect, but this is used, this is industrial. This is like I want it. Let's go with some painting. I will go with some grey. A little of grey. Some iridescent silver.
good guys it's done okay I used all the colors I wanted I have a mix of gray uh, and the iridescent silver as the base then copper I also added some copper here the dry brush copper you can see that I have here the piece of paper dry brush the copper to get some um, shadows here and there okay and then red for the wheels and some iridescent silver for the um, for the nails but those are not nails they are essentially some uh, big screws same thing for the old tubes there for the biggest tube uh, same color here okay uh, the copper added a little touch of uh, antique but also steampunk but antique okay so uh, that's all for the uh, street lamps i think i don't know if i will place them uh, on this part six maybe yes but the street the first couple of steampunk street lamps task is complete it will not be easy to find the right color combination for this new stair here i don't want to go with my standard gray even if it is well suited for all kind of stairs um, i don't want it to be too bright colored uh, because this is half ancient half new half old half new uh, and time tend to consume the colors all the colors tend to fade away uh, eaten by <laughs> the sunlight so if even the brightest red color tend to go towards white so that's the reason why all the old ancient stairs are yellowish or whitish that's the reason even if they were colored the same thing for the pyramids in Egypt, the same thing for the Egyptian columns in Egypt. They were absolutely uh, astonishing color red, uh, red, white, blue, gold. But the sun, it ate everything. So first of all, let's go with some black uh, wash intensively, massively. And for this, I will use the biggest brush I can use some water Good, the black wash is done. Yeah, I will wait for some hours to dry completely before starting to add some colors. See you in some hours. So guys, yeah, the black wash, the very hard intensive black wash has dry out completely. Several hours later, it is time to start painting it with some other colors. Very difficult to find the right colors. White, no. Pure white, no. Simply because you need to have some contrast between the snow all around and the stairs. Pure grey, as always, yes, could be a solution, but it is too dark. Yellowish, no, uh, not the correct stone because uh, we are in the northern hemisphere. Yellow, yellowish is more adapted to two southern regions where and they effectively use uh, yellow stones to make uh, the buildings, such as Africa, North Africa, um, and some other places. Uh, very 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 difficult um, brown no not yet uh, a mix I need to start from somewhere um, 
I've excluded white, I've excluded gray, pure white, pure gray. Uh, let me start with some white, yes, but dirty white. Uh, it's not the perfect color of dirty, <laughs> sorry guys. Um, white and just and just a little touch of gray. Not too much, otherwise it will prevail. Okay, let's try with this mix. So, big amount of white, just a little bit of gray. I think I will fast forward when all this paint is done and then show you the next colors I will add because this is absolutely very 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 long to do so see you in some let's say two hours good Oof. guys it has been let's see two and a half hours to complete these little stairs. Just two colors, no, in reality there are three. My mix of uh, white and a little bit of gray here, and then my original black wash, heavy black wash. I will not use some white dry brush as usual because I have already too much white but it's not gray guys uh, maybe it, uh, it appears to be gray but it is very very lightish light 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 gray almost towards white with all the black in the background and everything surely it helped having those bricks coming out uh, oddly from the wall but just two colors. I will not add any any brown, any green, nothing. I will leave it like this. Maybe you will eat this, but it's done. It is done, guys. I've also painted the balusters. Uh, they have still some reminiscence of black, but they are dirty. This is my stair. This is my dirty, whitish stair. Well, once again, I think I am very, very, very crazy and my madness is way beyond knowledge. I will talk about the new type of fence, the new type of steampunk fence. I will add around my water feature, my first water feature. Uh, you can see that this is the perimeter of what I, have, I will have here inside, I will not reveal. I will talk about everything I will use in this uh, phase here, this task, start of the, this new task. Then I will work quietly and silently while you um, regroup and decide and judge me. <laughs> okay, guys, so... Uh, I started with this base here. This is uh, 36 
by 23.5 centimeters. Okay, then I cut another one that is 40 by 25.5 centimeters, and this is 4 centimeters, 4 centimeters in here. And I, I uh, wanted to have 2 centimeters from each side. Okay, so here all around we have 2 centimeters, so this is 4, this is 6, 4, 6, 4, 6, and then 2 centimeters, 2 centimeters from each side. This will be the base. The two steps that I will work on a little bit. Bit on. Then a wall, no, a fence like this one. Why not? Why not? This is not a steampunk, this is too standard and it will have a suited correctly because having squared corners there and not rounded, I could have used them effectively and with a good intense point of view, maybe this is too short guys, because this will be huge and you risk to fall into the water. So, a new type of steam pump fence. The new design, obviously, and it's real guys, I sketched it very quickly on a piece of paper, I don't know, no, I don't have it right now, and then I decided, let's go ahead with that. And, but you know that I usually uh, work with traditional um, uh, components, with traditional materials and try to adapt everything. But, and I also told you that I will have used my uh, 3D printer only for figurines, but in this case it will be impossible to find everywhere on the market, on every marketplace, something that will help me build a fence, a steampunk fence. <laughs> you will find on the market like, um, cox gears, uh, uh, maybe some ads, some goggles uh, representing steampunk, and then balusters, I have adapted always for balusters, but in this case I wanted something very special, very particular. I had to transform my sketch on a little paper on something tangible. Very easily done, very quick. Um, just let me bring to the scene this little piece, guys. This took uh, 15 minutes to, uh, to model and then 15 minutes to print. I wanted uh, something uh, that will stand uh, up on the street like this without problems. So the triangle is the best choice, guys, like that. But I wanted not a simple triangle like that. I wanted uh, something particular. And then so I've gone with almost this little sketch here. And it was too pointy, okay? It was too pointy. And but I knew that I could have managed it on my, uh, on my 3D software. Then this is the base, then I wanted something to add some, uh, because if you use it like that, uh, you don't uh, have the aspect, like in this case, of a, uh, of a fence. So you, if this is the vertical piece, you need a, I, will, I would have needed something to get. The horizontal. That's the reason of the two walls in here and the dessert here in back. I thought I will place something horizontal here, something horizontal here, and then one bigger here on the top here. So three horizontal lines. And this is much taller, guys, than the original fences. Those are panel fences from Limax Lemax. Taller, yes, they will prevent people uh, and uh, children to fall into the into the uh, water feature, the, into the maybe fountain, fountain, <laughs> maybe, but it will be not a fountain. Let's call it a fountain because you will have some water. You know, I have shown you the pump, so you will have some water spilling around and spilling around. So this is the reason of the two walls. Those are two millimeters old. This one is three millimeters old. I will use something there to get a horizontal. Obviously, these will go 
these will go there on top of here and I will place them, I will glue them, then I will um, I will uh, paint it lately, etc. Normally in 2022 you will have to use the fences like that with the horizontal part like that for security reason because these will be called dangerous in 2022 but this is steampunk, this is Victorian era who cares about people, about uh, them getting injured on a fountain so I will place them like that with this part protruding towards and this is very very steampunk guys uh, <laughs> at least for me so the horizontal part for the horizontal part and I have a couple of them I printed some of them I printed uh, 20 of them so 3-4 hours of printing and nothing else <laughs> starting uh, Friday evening up to Saturday morning I will use this stainless steel um, cable, this is a 72 mini wires cable, you will see that you have 72 mini wires, mini cables, uh, and I will use them like that in here, okay, two of them, one here, then I will paint everything in the same color and one here, okay, and the other in here, like that, okay, so one here, oh, sorry, you aren't seeing anything, I was saying, this is some um, stainless steel wires, they are stainless steel wires, and I will use them, one in here, and one on the uh, bottom part there, okay, and I will paint them lately, etc. On the top, I will use this stainless steel cable, but this has uh, some plastic, some PVC around it, so it is a 3 cm, 3 mm in diameter, so a, a little larger, okay, and you see, you can appreciate the difference on in diameter between the two of them, but this is mean, meant to be in up here, in order to have two here, one there, maybe two, uh, someone getting their hands there, but and then, and then something else in here, guys, in between the two there. We are not there yet. So, this is the design. But then I told to myself, why? Why just the song triangular um, um, supports for the uh, vertical fences? I will also need all around these uh, new type of fences, some, 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 some street lamps. I usually use those street lamps here that are a modification from this to this, cut here, cut here, use the base here, use the top in here, then I have an LED inside, a white, uh, a white LED. A couple of wires, a connecting, uh, connecting uh, plug here, and these are my uh, yes, and a couple of washers there, and those will be. This is not suited for this little guy here. Steampunk and not steampunk. Steampunk not steampunk. I say, why not having four? Four new type of um, street lamp. Very quickly done. Starting, the, the, I model them, I design them. Starting from this point here, because this has to be common with the uh, with all the feature there, with all the fans. I decided to put one here, one there, and one on the opposite side on the corners there, and I came up with this design, guys. You can see that if I put it like that, the base is that. So I add just to add something more here. And this is as an industrial 
time as a steampunk and I those are common <laughs> building I don't know skyscrapers okay nowadays they build skyscrapers with these eye shaped metallic uh, road uh, any, anyway so I incorporated this in here having some more space in the back and two grooves one here and one in the back yes but this is not a street lamp okay i started from this one and i re-engineered this one uh, that's the reason of the uh, grooves here i will uh, certainly go not with those wires here because they are too big they will fit inside the groove but i will uh, lose completely the reason of the groove but on hand i also add this little beast here this is a couple of wires connected two wires suited for um, train motors and this is specially done for N scale uh, street lamps and trains very tiny trains very tiny street lamps this is the the smallest cable I can find and I have used this to build this little guy with an LED on top I will not show you how I do this because it's the same uh, technique I've used for my previous um, first steampunk uh, street lab but even with this wire here and look guys if I place the, this wire here in the groove then paint it the groove will remain and the little wire will completely disappear in the groove having me using it like that and then I will make disappear the, the wires maybe in here and then something uh, somewhere else okay uh, I was saying engineering <laughs> backward back engineering those street lamps works with the LED pointing toward the up the cables running into the pipe, into the, um, the PVC pipe in here and then coming out from, the, from the, the other side. I will not have a pipe, a tube here. I will have the LED pending down like that. Awful to see. But I have a good start here. I have a good start. So I have opened one of those little and I took apart this little guy here okay and this will be placed like that inside here but I will need a way to put so if those LED point the light towards the top those will point the light towards the um, downwards okay upwards downwards like that this wasn't suitable because i will i had no mean to hang it there even cutting so i started from the base here and i also modeled very quickly this is only an hexagon up going up but i've made i don't know if you can see a hole inside it where the wire will get through and this little thing here this little half of a tube here will help me gluing it back like that okay then I will have this little guy here but I wasn't satisfied. I wanted something to close here. So this wasn't 
uh, suited. So I add to an hexagon, oops, a little sphere. This will close like that. The two hexagons are exactly the same and I will go with some blue like that. So let me go ahead. I will have this and then this. Impossible to show you right now, but it will close like that. Opposite ways, same thing. And these guys has the same diameter of those little ones. So the dimension of this is exactly the same dimension of that one here. A little higher, a little taller, because I will have some wires inside there. But this is up. And once I complete it. So the wires will go back, but I don't want the wires to be visible there. So uh, if they go back, reaching this point here, under this point here, uh, e and starting from this point, they will be visible. So, at a certain moment, I say, in this point, right here, okay, I will do a hole, and then I will drill a hole, and then the wires from the outside will go into the inside, and they will also not be visible because you will have this part here and then the wires coming out from here will go inside the, the support there and then I will glue it like that Steampunk fence Steampunk also fence guys because this will be a street lamp inside or on top of a part of a fence. The fence will go, will continue, and those will be put like that on the corner with these one little guys in here, with the wires getting through here and getting pulled. This will be the continuity of the fence, but also a street lamp. One here, one on the corner, plenty. Mm, uh, plenty of uh, point of view there. They will certainly not illuminate the water feature. I will have some uh, some uh, street lamps on top of the next level here on the second level that will project light on the uh, on the feature there on what I will have inside here that will project also shadows everywhere. Those are for illuminating this part here and the corner and each of there. Uh, mm, I've used uh, the, uh, foggy, uh, once again a foggy LED because uh, uh, otherwise the, the cone reflecting would have been too intense because in, in this, due to the fact that the top is uh, um, covered by the top, you will never see the angle every single one of the LED has an, uh, a projection angle. In this case they have 30 degrees, so it's like having a cone of light going at 30 degrees like that, projecting a cone of 30 degrees, uh, while the more you um, part away from the surface, the more um, the larger will be the, the cone projected but with the center very, very intense illuminated. The foggy is not have this problem. Yes, 30 degrees of uh, cone of illumination like that, but uh, uh, without a center, a bright center, so very diffuse light. But I don't know if uh, they will be enough to illuminate everything I will have in here. Not my problem right now. It's uh, a big thing, let me check the camera. So, this is how I will proceed. Uh, yes, long explanation, but now I will start working and getting uh, some, some result. Uh, I don't know how long it will take. Not yet there, I will start from 
the little base here. I want something more rounded there. Good. My fingers are always dirty. Um, this is how it will appear until now. Okay, the four lamps on the corners, and then some vertical support for the uh, for the um, for the horizontal section of the fences. Let's add some of these cables here.
Good. You may think that I finished. Not, not, not finished, guys. Not quite. I will work on the back here. I will try to put this little mesh here. It's metal. And it's plain solid, it's not plastic, it's very dangerous. Yes, it cuts. I will apply here, from this point here, to this, this mesh here. So I will need, I will need pieces of four centimeters. Okay guys, now it is really finished. I simply need to cut here. Okay, really finished, okay? I will need to connect the four uh, the four um, street lamp and paint it. I think I will paint this uh, pale blue. Yes, all pale blue here. All pale blue. But 
Let's continue with something else. This, you will see the effect once I will do my final recap in, I think, one hour, one hour and a half. Still need to start the new building. Then I will do the final recap. See you, guys. And finally, the new building, guys. I will start it and not finish it. This is huge, guys. This is 34 centimeters by 22 centimeters. A very gigantic building in scale, yes, with other buildings. And this is only the main base. And this will not be a church, guys. <laughs> not a church. Um, but I will have also something else externally to this main base here. Uh, and this is the thing I will show you in this part uh, 6 before the final recap and my outro, obviously. So 34 by 22 centimeters. The base 9 millimeters as always. Let me work on something. This will be the eighth of a level. This will be at least two, two levels. We'll have two levels, okay? So uh, I will get to, to this and I will try to work as always. I will go with 2.5 centimeters from one side. Oh, by the way, this is 6.3 centimeters by 13.1 centimeters. Not working. Two point five centimeters in here, and then I will go with uh, uh, no. I will change my mind. One point five centimeters. centimeters and then 2.5 centimeters okay now I will uh, go up uh, by 3.6 centimeter to 3.5, 3.6 centimeters and this way here too 1, 2, 3.5, 3.6 centimeters okay let's say like that okay now I will go
Okay, this will be how we proceed uh, from time to time building the his new building, assembling this new building. Uh, here I will have a wall here, I will have another wall here, and this will be the main chamber here. Here I will have something else. So this is the beginning, one level here, then two level, maybe three level. Huge. Uh, this is uh, five centimeters, so it is uh, shorter than a standard figurine. But then I will add doors and everything else. It's nothing right now, but this will be an ancient building. And the final recap of part six, guys, and I will start from there, from the water. The silicone water that I painted with that um, titanium oxide powder there and water and the result is that guys I will get a little approach in here so now the waters are white and not completely white you can still see through the uh, water uh, where I have those transparent and not painted sections and also from the downside here this is the look of the white waters even the cliff there i can hear the sound of the waves guys and sorry going too too quickly there and so even from the eight there you can see that the water now is white and there not white, clear, crystal clear. And you can have this result with just simply uh, water and a powder. Here too, the arbor is done. Oops, I stick. And the other part of the arbor in there, guys. Uh, and from the from this angle too, let me do this. Okay, you can see through. And the waters are now. I think that's my little honest opinion that this way, the water is way more interesting than, uh, than without any painting at all on top of it. And this is the white waters, guys. Those are white waters. Half an hour to paint everything and now you can see that it's not slippery at all and the color will stick there forever. No, if I wash it, it will go away. If I pour some water and wash it, it will go away. That's the difference. This powder stick to the silicone, but if I use water, it um, wash away. But I have no intention to use water on those uh, little waves I've done there. Another leaf. Okay, guys. Then, uh, ah, yes. The uh, steampunk uh, uh, street lamp there. Uh, let me go even further. You can see that this is not uh, the final spot, but I just placed it in order to give you an idea of what I meant. It has been painted, yes, I painted it with uh, grey and um, iridescent silver, then some copper. Everything is painted, the little wheels in red, I still need to uh, find a way to hide the wires in here. And this is the other big uh, pipe that will give the steam to these three uh, um, street lamps there. That's my intention. This will go up inside the wall and also the little one will go inside the wall. But as this is not the uh, final spot, I still need to find uh, the right uh, position. And also there, the little pressure uh, indicator there. I don't know. Maybe it's not the perfect result, but I like them, guys. 
uh, the other tools are there uh, with the same principle. And I've managed it to go the exact same eight or almost the same eight as previous uh, ones. But you will also see plenty of the old street lamps uh, all along this season. The wall, guys, the stairs. AJ, sorry, I five J, and this is the result. So two colors, black, and then a mix of white and just a little tip of gray inside. Th those are white. The, maybe you get the impression through the camera that this is gray, but no, it is white. And from the eight, also the result of the stairs, the balusters painted with some black remaining, the bricks, uh, different tones of white, different tones of black, because this is when you dry brush on a wall having different thickness of bricks. You get painted the, the ones that are more prominent and those who are on the back. Uh, gets less color and this is the effect done on the stairs uh, here too i painted a little more here on the sides because generally uh, you get the people getting through the stairs uh, respecting this angle here from this angle here to this one the the sides of the stairs aren't that uh, used for, for pe uh, by people and so the uh, steps are not that ruined, uh, damaged or uh, aged at all and the other part there with the other bricks two different uh, coloration yes uh, not even but uh, <laughs> the two walls are not even at all guys and this is how I wanted the stairs this year. Two colors, white and black. Here, something is missing, guys. I know. Let me just uh, put the camera steady there. And I still need to grab little monster here it comes guys and I will place it right now okay guys sorry good and the fences guys this is the result not or not yet painted but it gets perfectly in there the right i haven't made any mistakes on measuring the distance between uh, the this point here and those so it fits it fits exactly there towards the uh, far wall and this is from the distance here and if I place J there with the standard 8 you see that J is not even uh, in danger of falling into the water because the fence is high enough to protect them and the other fences sorry guys I will get some other fences the standard ones the standard ones are way, let me put them if I can, like that. They are absolutely shorter, you can see. And with people getting there, you risk to get people on the, into the water. The street lamps fixed. I had some problems because you have certainly seen that uh, the corner, the two corner street lamps detached during the um, um, assembling of the railing there. 
because those cables here are not uh, flexible so I have problems doing the corners but then I re-glued them where they needed to be and the curve there it uh, they took the natural curve dictated by the distance from this section here and this one here and from the side guys here is the effect from the side uh, white on white it uh, it's nothing right now the steps are rounded here you can see that i have done some steps this will be some sort of a pavement and then all these even the mesh there very dangerous no not not really dangerous but uh, i could have used a um, mosquito uh, mesh I also add uh, on end a mosquito mesh. Uh, this is pure metal mesh, but uh, the um, uh, the mesh was too narrow, less than a millimeter. It would it would it would have certainly uh, blurred the view behind the mesh. But this one you can see through it. You can see the pump there. So even uh, if I have a mesh, it is visible what you have behind it. And this will be painted, I was saying, pale blue, pale blue, pale blue, pale blue or so the, the street lamps. These I don't know yet. Um, okay. Oh, yes. One last thing. The ancient building will be up there, guys. I place it here where I want it. It is huge, guys. I know it is huge. But let me take... J here and it won't fit inside uh, as normally and uh, the buildings are smaller in scale to with the figurines so but this will be in scale and this will be in on top of the third level there i will do it step by step uh, week by week part after part until the completion J here uh looking at something there and i think i've uh, say to you everything i've done yet please <laughs> give me a comment on that uh, <laughs> strange uh, i planned this in 30 minutes and the outcome is there the stairs there took me almost six months to get the final result this is absolutely done on the uh, on the rush like that and uh, with the shapes and everything else decided to go that way uh, last minute design guys uh, i don't know uh, yes i maybe with inside the <laughs> the real feature inside it it will be more uh, understandable why I used this uh, design there. So guys, thank you. I will see you in just some seconds for my outro. Pure madness, Jay, you are right. And I will need to apologize with you guys because at the very beginning of this new 2022 series, I made a promise not to use my 3D printer except for the figurines. And now I decided to print the uh, the fences and the uh, street lamps, the new steampunk fences and the street lamp. But guys, I could also have printed everything with the printer, even the mesh and the rails. But instead, I made a mix between all the technology and the new technology. Uh, and this is the result, guys. I will pro no. no. I will not promise to not use anymore my 3D printer because steampunk is very, very difficult to achieve. You will haven't found anything like that uh, as a replacement on marketplaces, on hardware stores, on garden stores, anywhere you would have to find them in any of those parts. So maybe I will use uh, my 3D printer again a little bit for something else during the season, I will try not to do that. Hey guys, the 3D printers 
uh, are low in price uh, each day uh, once upon a long time ago they were uh, just for some uh, specialists but nowadays the price is terribly low and you can afford a uh, 3d printer maybe uh, you will have the, a 3d printer for a price of uh, two very big Lenox <laughs> buildings so renounce to two buildings to get a 3d printer very useful very easy to use guys <laughs> simply simply done uh, and so on the stairs the stairs are now complete maybe i will do something else on the second level still need oh by the way if you want to get a look to the these little fences and the stairs I will go with this camera, uh, this way you can see the stairs from a front view and also the new uh, fences. Uh, you will understand why I went with these fences when what is inside there will be present, will be final present. I think for part 7 guys, <laughs> I, I don't know, I will try to do it for part 7 for next part. Uh, but I still need to do some adjustments here and there, especially on the bed uh, of the of the fountain. There. Let's call it a fountain. So this is the front look you will get, and also with the uh, with the steampunk and street and lamps, and not a lot to do done. Middle way, guys. Yes. N sorry, I rephrase it. Not too much done. I'm middle way guys, yes I did something, this it was very long to do, especially the painting, but guys, <laughs> please don't forget to subscribe, comment and give big thumbs up. Thank you for watching, thank you for bearing my absolutely awful English and see you next time, but only if you wish.